Adel, okay. I hope everyone's able to hear me uh, in virtual land. It looks like it's just about 6.30. We're going to give it a few more minutes to see if we have any more parents join us, and then we're going to get started. For those of us that have joined us, we're going to give it about just one more minute. Um, if you have joined us, if you can remain muted, that will help us to make sure that we're able to share information for everyone to hear. Um, one of the benefits of us being all in person in school this year is we are not as savvy with our technology as we have been before. So if you can remember to remain muted, that would be helpful. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. I appreciate, we appreciate very much for you guys being flexible uh, with our need last week to make an adjustment to when we held our eighth grade parent meeting. Um, and thank you for being willing to join us virtually this night. My name is Anissa Lock Hines. I am the freshman administrator at Gahan Lincoln High School. I am one of five administrators for um, assistant principals and our head principal, um, Ms. Williams, who was currently out on maternity leave. Um, I thank you for joining us this evening. We are going to go over what is probably one of the um, key priorities of our students when they come to high school. Um, is choosing their classes and scheduling to make sure that we have them on the proper path of graduation um, and beyond. I am going to soon be turning the, this over to one of our lead counselors, Chelsea Stonicker, who will walk you through what scheduling will look like for your eighth grader as they prepare for their high school career. All right, thank you, Mrs. Lockheims. So, Melissa Monig will be monitoring the chat. If you have any questions during this time, you're welcome to put those questions in the chat and she'll answer them throughout the presentation. Um, and then if we still have questions at the end, we'll go through questions at the end as well. So first and foremost, I wanna say welcome to Gahanna Lincoln High School. We're so excited to have the eighth graders joining us next year. So first things first, um, at the high school level, we have six school counselors. Um, and we're all pictured here at the top. 
Um, I'll go through the breakdown here in the next slide. Um, so typically our students can book appointments with us through the You Can Book Me. Um, and most, if not all of the school counselors at the high school have um, that link in their uh, signature. So if you email your school counselor, you should be able to access that. Um, we really focus on social and, and emotional learning, college and career readiness and academics. Uh, Mrs. Lockhines talked, um, touched base on this a little bit with the freshman experience office, but that's going to be key um, for your students freshman year. Um, any attendance issues or if your student's going to be absent, that's the office that you're going to want to call to let them know ahead of time. And that is also where Mrs. Lockhines office is housed. We also have grade level Google Classrooms. So we have one for freshmen, junior freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And um, important information is posted in that Google Classroom throughout the school year. So it's just good to have your student check those frequently. Um, we also operate in an eight period day and they are 46 minutes long. Um, most, most freshman level courses are going to be single block classes, but there are a few, or it's not single block, just single classes, but um, some classes will be offered in a block format, like intro to robotics and some art courses. And that looks like, so on a, we operate on A days and B days. So intro to robotics could be periods one and two on A days. And then on B days, they would have another class. But it is typically um, only intro to robotics and some art courses their freshman year. A lot of the block courses are upper level courses that they'll run into their junior and senior year. Um, we have three lunch periods at the high school, and that is periods four, five, and six. And any student could have any lunch. It's just dependent on um, how their schedule works out with the classes that they put in. Um, and as a freshman and sophomore, students are to have a closed lunch, which means that they eat lunch on campus but their junior and senior year, they have the availability to go off campus for lunch and they have an open lunch. So that's something to look forward to as they continue on in high school. Um, students are also able to have lockers. And one of the cool things about high school is your student gets to choose the location of their locker. They're just responsible for bringing a lock um, to lock that locker. And then one last thing is students, um, if your student ends up having a study hall in their day, it is something that they would have every day. Um, and most of those study halls are housed in the cafeteria um, during lunch periods, they're in the classrooms. So here's a quick breakdown of the school counselors. So um, I'm Mrs. Stallnaker and I have students A through C-A-R, last name, Dr. Nelson Slagle has CAS through FO. Mrs. Monning has FP through KE. Mr. Miller has KF through OR. Mrs. Prinevo has OS through SN. And Mrs. Himmel is out right now. And um, Anna Locks is her long term sub. So she has SO through Z. So now we're going to get into a little bit about scheduling. So some important steps to scheduling. First, check out this presentation. I'm going to send this out to the middle school counselors again with some extra documents um, to get out to you guys just so that you have it for reference. There's some links in this um, presentation that are clickable that I want you to have access to after the presentation as well. Um, have discussions with your family. And most importantly, I would say teachers. Teachers can speak to um, how your student performs in the classroom and they would be able to um, you know, speak to what level of class you th they think that your student could perform um, well in next year. May that be a regular class or an honors class, the different science classes that we'll go over, all of that important stuff. Um, it's important to review graduation requirements, which we'll go over as well, just to start planning your freshman year. Um, write down your eight period day. I think it's super important um, to visually see 
what classes you're putting into your schedule, and it's helpful to write it down. Um, and then lastly, sign up for classes through Infinite Campus, which we'll go through as well. So the scheduling process is so important um, because it starts out um, your student's freshman year. And um, it's so important to encourage your student to pick classes that are important to them and that they value because we cannot create um, schedules that um, are important to them if they don't choose classes that um, they are going to enjoy. We want them to enjoy their year and um, the classes that they take. Um, yep, just picks meaningful classes that will um, lend you to your future and your future goals. So now we're going to go over some graduation requirements, the different types of honor diplo honors diplomas, um, College Credit Plus, and a few other things. So two of the most important tools for scheduling are the program of studies and our course offering sheet. Um, these are both clickable links that um, you'll want to check out like during the scheduling process in the program of studies. Um, we have honors diploma information, graduation requirements, but most importantly, there's course descriptions of every single class that is offered at Gehanna Lincoln High School. Um, so you can go in and learn a little bit more about each of the classes that are offered to see if it'd be something that your student would be interested in taking. Um, and then it also goes over um, things like PE exemptions, each um, department in the building has a little blurb about that, them as well. For the course offering sheet, um, this also has all of the courses that are offered here at the high school. Some important things to note on this is it also tells you um, how many credits you will earn if you take the class. And it's also important to notice if there is an asterisk next to um, the course on this page, it means that this course requires an application or audition. And if there's a plus sign next to it, that means that this course requires a prerequisite. So the graduation requirements um, for the class of 2022, and these are credit requirements. So your student must earn four credits of English, four of math, um, which, much, which must include a credit of algebra two or equivalent, three science credits, at least one life science, one physical science, and one additional science credit, three social studies credits, one of modern world history, one of US history, and one of government, um, half a credit of PE, which is either two semesters of PE, um, but there are also waivers available and we'll go over um, PE waivers as well. Um, half a credit of health. There are three mandatory electives, um, half a credit of speech, a full credit of a visual or performing arts, ha and half a credit of financial literacy. And we offer economics and personal finance to meet those requirements. And then three additional electives of your student's choice. So these are the graduation requirements um, for the class of 2026. And this over here on the side is also um, a clickable link that I want you guys to be able to go in and read a little bit more. This talks about some of the seals that we'll talk about down here. Um, one thing is students must complete set six end of course exams. Um, and on top of that, they will need to earn the 20 credits that we just talked about. They will need to show competency through the state assessments or career focused activities, enlist in the military or complete college coursework. And then lastly, they will need to earn two diploma seals. And you can click this link over here to learn a little bit more about what some of those seals um, are. So now um, we're into honors diploma. There are six different honors diplomas that are available to students. Um, the one that most students end up um, choosing if they go this route is the academics honors diploma. 
And these are clickable links as well if you want to go in to see what requirements are for these honors diploma. Um, the International Bac Bachelorette um, Honors Diploma. Um, we do not offer these courses at GLHS, but it's still something that you could look at. Um, Career Tech Honors Diploma, STEM Honors Diploma, Arts Honors Diploma, and the Social Science and Civic Engagements Honor Di Honors Diploma. And you can find more information about this in the program of studies as well. Um, it's never too late to start thinking about these. So it's definitely good to look into these um, starting your freshman year if it is something that you're interested in. Next, I want to talk about honors courses. Um, if you intend to sign up for an honors course, please remember to consult with your current teachers to see if these courses um, would be a good fit for you. I cannot stress enough, current teachers um, would be able to speak to what your student would excel best in next year. Um, these courses have a heightened rigor and move at a much fa faster pace. Um, a balanced schedule is key to a successful year. If your student has not taken an honors course before, um, we recommend starting out with one just to see how it would go. But you guys know your student best. If you think that your student can excel in more than one honors course, then absolutely go for it. We encourage it. Um, next are the three different science options that students um, have as a freshman. So most students end up choosing physical science, but there are three different options. And the science department was so gracious enough to put together um, like a little flow chart to help you choose which science course would be best. So I'm going to send that out to the middle school counselors um, and they'll get that out to you as well so that you can have access to it and look at it as well. Um, physical science, you would earn a physical science credit. Um, it's most recommended for freshman level courses um, and it helps make the transition from eighth to ninth grade. Intro to robotics, this would be another physical science credit, but it is offered in the double block format. So your student would only have this course every other day. Um, there is a lot of independent and group work time. So your student must be able to manage their time independently. And it, it's important to note that this is not the same as robotics team in middle school. And then lastly is biology, which is a life science credit. And this, this course will have sophomores and freshmen in this course. So your student also has the ability to um, participate in College Credit Plus. This program um, permits students to expand educational opportunities and earn high school credit um, and college credit while they're in high school. Um, one important thing to note is if your student does end up taking a College Credit Plus course, um, the teacher does not know that your student is a high school student. Um, so to get a little bit more information about College Credit Plus courses, we are hosting a virtual CCP meeting next, I believe that is next Tuesday, January 18th at 6.30 p.m., and then they're going to host a little Q&A session afterwards as well, if you have any questions. Um, there are some selective courses at the high school level, and this just means that um, they require an application or audition. And the middle school counselor should have sent those applications out to students if they are interested in them. Um, technical theater, intro to debate, student council, co-art and color guard are all some of the courses that require um, an audition or application. Um, and then all College Credit Plus courses also require additional paperwork as well. So we are offering a few new courses at the high school that I just wanted to highlight. Um, Intro to Theater, and that's a course that could count as your speech credit. Intro to Broadcast Journalism, Sports Broadcasting, and Film and Documentary Production. These are all new courses that your student could take as a freshman if they're interested. So PE waivers. 
your student has the ability to earn these if they participate in two seasons of a sport, marching band, or corral. Um, it's important to note that your student must complete the season of the sport, marching band, or corral to its entirety to earn that PE exemption. There's no extra paperwork that you need to fill out. They just need to make sure that they finish the season. And um, your student could, if they're playing a sport, they could play one season of basketball and one season of softball, and that would get their PE waiver. It does not have to be the same sport to earn that PE waiver. Um, students who do participate in the PE waiver must earn an extra half credit in electives to make up for that PE exemption. So that way you can make sure that you get to the 20 credits that they would need to meet graduation requirements. Um, and you may not mix and match. So if you do one season of basketball your freshman year and then um, take a gym class your sophomore year, that does not um, meet graduation requirements for PE. You must either do two semesters of PE or you must do two seasons of a sport, two seasons of marching band, or two seasons of corral. I know that can get a little confusing, so if you need clarification, please let us know. So just a few more um, important details to share. The program of studies is a great tool. Um, just wanna highlight some pages in there. The grad requirements are on page six. The honors diploma information is on pages 10 and 11, and PE exemptions are on page 44 and 45. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have your students talk with their current teachers to see what classes might um, be best for them next year. Um, and if you aren't an athlete, please keep OSHA and NCAA requirements in mind when making course selections. Um, and this is something that we haven't touched on yet, all students must earn a minimum of five credits each year, and this includes seniors as well. So it's when you're mapping out um, just your students' high school courses, just keep in mind that even if they get um, two 20 credits, they still need to have um, five credits that come their senior year. Um, important deadlines. So course registration opened up Tuesday, January 4th. All students must have their requests in by next Friday, January 21st. And then all selective course applications are due to teachers or the school counseling office by next Friday, January 21st as well. So now we're going to go through how to actually go into Infinite Campus and schedule um, your courses. So we talked about it a little bit, but I think it's important to physically write out or map out what um, your student's schedule could look like. Um, we provided an example grid here that you could use if you wanted. So it could look something like this. So every student will register for English 9 and Modern World History as a freshman. Um, if you want to sign up for honors, you have the ability to do that now. Um, your school counselors will be selecting your um, math class. Um, we will be in communication with the current eighth grade math teachers. Um, and based on what math class they're in now, we will choose that math class for them. Um, we have three science options. Be sure to look at that chart that I'm gonna send out um, to the middle school counselors. Um, you don't need to worry about scheduling for lunch. You can leave a space for this. That's something the school counselors will put in for you. Um, and then if you would like to have a study hall in your schedule, um, leave a space. And that's something that we would add in for you. We know that um, some students do benefit from having a study hall in their schedule, but not every student does. Some students perform their best by having eight full or I guess it would be seven with lunch, seven full classes in their day. And you guys know your student best. If you think that they could um, perform best without a study hall, that is ultimately your choice. 
Um, here's just an example. So English nine is a class that is all year. Same with algebra. Um, your student selects a half a year class such as speech. They could end up with study hall for half of a year. Um, physical science is a whole year class. Lunch is all year. Modern world history is all year. Spanish two is all year. And then there would be two electives that are semester courses at the end of the day. So to go in to physically register for these courses, um, you would need to go to Infinite Campus and log in under Campus Student. You can go to this link as well um, to start that process. Once you're logged into Infinite Campus, on the left-hand side at the bottom, there's a button, um, more, click that. Um, once you get there, this screen should pop up and you can click course registration. And then you choose Lincoln High School, but it'll be 2022, 2023 when you go to click on it. Um, it could be helpful to have the course offering sheet next to you so that you can see um, either the course name or the course number. You can either type in the course number or the name to find the class that you're looking for. Um, once you're in Lincoln High School, you can click and add the courses that you would like to add to your course request. Like I stated before, you can enter either the course name or number. You can click the plus sign and then click request. And then this is an example of what that would look like. And over here, if you click on the white screen in there, there's a course description of each class. And that's kind of from the program of studies. So if you want to um, get a little bit more information about each class, you can click on that to get that. Um, and then you will see your course requests listed below. Don't be concerned with the percentage complete or the units. Um, and you don't need to save anything. You just need to make sure that all of the requests are in by next Friday. Um, just some notes to highlight. If you don't see a course that you're looking for, it's probably because it's a selective course and requires an audition or application. Um, remember when looking for courses to select, um, you search using the course name or number. Um, and we highly encourage you to map out your schedule, if not on the grill, grid, on a piece of paper, um, just to see what your day would look like. And if you still need help, um, the high school counselors are working on going back to the middle schools to check eighth graders requests and answer any questions that they may have. Um, you can also email your high school counselor with questions. And if you don't know who your school counselor is, we'll have that on the next slide here. So attached is our email addresses and um, if you need help figuring out who your student school counselor may be, you can look here um, on the side. And that is all that I have. Do we have any questions left in the chat? Yeah, Chelsea, I can read those questions to you if you want. We can yeah, that's fine. Them. Um, a question about applications and auditions, I think. Yeah that probably no auditions at this point for incoming ninth graders, but we do have applications for two classes, right? Yes. That would be, is it co-art and? Yeah. And student council. And student council, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, Try to not to skip any of the questions. So let me go back up real quick. Um, so if a student wants to take a math class over the summer, how would they say they, how would they, I guess, report the grade is the next question. Okay. So most students, if they take a course over the summer, they would take it through TRECA 
or an online school like that. And Treka communicates that with us. You don't need to worry about reporting that to us. Okay, next question. Does eighth grade Spanish count as taking the Spanish one class? It does, yes. If your student is in Spanish one now as an eighth grader, that does count as a high school credit. Yep. Okay, next question. When will um, high school counselors be meeting with students to go over selections, their course selections? So um, I think, Melissa, you go out tomorrow to Middle School East, correct? Yep. And then so East tomorrow. Yes. And then Annie and Anna go out next Wednesday to Middle School West. Yep. And Dwayne and I need to figure out when we're going to go back to Middle School South to finish those requests. Yep, but sometime soon. Um, okay, next question. Um, they keep saying to map out their eight period day. Can you tell us, or can you tell from within Infinite Campus which periods classes are even offered? Um, and do you have to worry about whether a class conflicts or not? So I can answer that one. Um, no, you can't tell because periods haven't been even configured yet. So what students are doing now, they're just entering course requests. Our admin take all of these requests and they use that to build our master schedule. So that tells us how many courses we need, how many sections, how many teachers. So that won't take place for probably another month or so. So we won't actually begin working on actual student schedules until late spring, early summer. We just are encouraging students to map out an eight period day, um, like a mock schedule, just so they can make sure that they have enough classes. Um, you know, we don't want them to have too many classes. We don't want them to have not enough classes. So that's just a way to kind of organize the course requests. All right, um, Chelsea, next question. Will you be sending out this slide deck so we can use the clickable links? Yes, absolutely. Tomorrow I will be sending out this information and um, some of the other documents to the middle school counselors so that they can get it out to you guys as well. Yep. Okay, next question is, um, I think asking, are these course requests for the entire year or are we scheduling for just first semester? That's a good question. This is for the whole year. So any um, like semester classes that you wanna put in, put in all that you would want to have for your eighth grade year. Yeah, next question, are we able to register for honors classes? Yes, you can register for Honors English 9 and Honors Modern World History. Okay, um, question about CoArt. Um, CoArt, there's a better description in the program of studies, but just very briefly, it's similar to, I think some of our middle schools have this, where um, CoArt, you have students who will act as peers to students um, from our FSS or ESS units. Okay. Um, looking for my next question. If a student signs up for honors courses and it's too much, can they switch to a regular course? Absolutely. Like come those first few weeks of school, if it becomes too much, have your student touch base with their school counselor and we can get them into a regular um, English or modern world history class. Yeah. The next question is similar. If a student can't handle the class, when can they drop it? Um, so basically um, a few weeks into the semester for a semester course, and then it's right before the first quarter ends for a year-long course. Okay, next question. How are CCP courses reported to the high school for credit? I can answer that one. So if a student is taking a CCP course through Columbus State, once that course is complete, then Columbus State will send us the grades. We add those grades to our transcript um, and show the grade that they earned. Okay. Next question, can they take health or speech the summer before freshman year or the summer after? You can technically do either. Um, you can take health online through Treka. Um, I know speech is offered in our summer, um, like our summer school, but it fills up really quickly. You can definitely try to get in, but I know that speech does fill up rather quickly. Yep. So that's why it's nice that beginning with this current school year, students can also take intro to theater if they can't get in speech course. 
Okay, next question. Does computer art one count as a half credit towards a BPA? Computer art one, yes, it does. Next question, are GLHS English teachers still teaching the CCP comp classes? They, are they? Yeah. I truthfully don't know the answer to that question, I'm yep. sorry. That's okay. We have a couple of sections of CCP one, um, comp one and a couple of sections of CCP comp two. And those are our teachers. Now they do have to follow Columbus State's curriculum and they work with a professor from Columbus State, but they are our teachers in our building. Some students though, will choose to take the comp course online through Columbus State or at Columbus State. Okay, next question. How many foreign language Oh, you cut out. Could you say that again? Oh, sorry. The next question is, how many foreign language credits do you need? So foreign language is not a high school requirement. Um, if your student is planning to go to college, I'd recommend two or three years of a foreign language. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. In what scenario would one choose biology for ninth grade instead of physical science? Um, so it's really a personal choice. There is a handout, as I think um, Chelsea mentioned, that she'll send out along with this presentation, and it kind of gives you, and even in the presentation, I guess it does highlight the difference between physical, physical science and biology. It's really a personal choice. Um, for years, students in ninth grade couldn't take biology, so it's probably been about five years now that they changed that. Um, it just depends on how interested the student is in science. I think physical science is a great first science course at the high school level, but if a student wants to um, jump right into biology, that's fine too. In my experience, um, the situation that sometimes happens that um, isn't so great is if a student takes biology in ninth grade, then in 10th grade, they typically don't go back to physical science because a lot of times physical science is a lot of freshmen. So then after biology, if they struggled in it, then they're looking at the advanced sciences. And so it just gets a little bit more complicated. Um, the other thing for graduation requirements, students need one physical science, one life science, and then an advanced. So if your student doesn't have plans to go into the medical field um, or isn't passionate about science, then taking that physical science in ninth grade biology, which is a life science in 10th grade, that any other science they choose is going to be an advanced science. It's a kind of a smooth transition, but it is truly a personal decision. Okay, next one. If your child wants to have a study hall all year, do you request this through Infinite Campus? So no, you could leave a blank in your schedule for that. And that's something that we would put in for you. Um, how would you put on Infinite Campus that the student did the math class over the summer? Does it automatically go to Infinite Campus or does the student have to do something in Infinite Campus? So we would get communication with TRECA, but it probably wouldn't hurt to also touch base with your high school counselor just to let them know that, th that your student is planning to do that. Yeah, so that would just go straight on the transcript. So if the student signs up as soon as they register for it, like Chelsea just said, if you contact the school counselor to say, we're supposed to be in algebra one, we're taking that over the summer, we'd like to schedule geometry, that will make it easy. Uh, do they have to have a speech class in ninth grade? No, it does not have to be in ninth grade, but they will have to at some point in high school. Okay. Can a student add a class before the second semester to replace the study hall if they decide they don't need the hall? Yeah, if it's a semester class, we could definitely add a semester class at the semester mark. Yep. And then I think I have a question about um, when high school counselors visit um, the middle schools, are we working with the students at our alphabet? And no, we're not. We're really just there to make students have all the requests in, and it goes pretty quickly. Okay, if your child takes CCP courses, how does that affect their school day? Are they taking these outside school hours? and having study halls to fill up that time, it's kind of hard to plan. So I can answer that, Chelsea. Um, with CCP, it really just depends on if the student is going to Columbus State, if they are going to take it online, if they wanna take one of our embedded courses. Embedded courses are the College Credit Plus classes that we offer at the high school. So it's really just a personal decision. If you have a student who's going to take CCP classes, 
I would probably work with the school counselor because it's going to be very individualized and you can decide, does the student want to have a study hall where they are going to work on that college credit plus or do they plan to work on that after school? Um, so it's really pretty individualized. Okay, how do you sign up for algebra when it isn't showing an infinite campus? So your school counselors will put your math request in for you. You don't have to worry about selecting it. Yep. Um, do freshmen have alternate courses for their elective courses? And would they also be needed for science and math? So say that again. Sorry. Um, okay. Do freshmen need to have alternate courses for their electives? And would they also need them for math and science? So they definitely don't need it for math and science. They'll be able to get into those math and science courses, but maybe some of the electives, I would recommend putting in a few extra just in case. Yeah. Next question. Sports broadcasting has a prerequisite sign, um, but it says it's available for freshmen. What is the prerequisite? Intro to broadcast journalism, and they would be able to take sports broadcasting their second semester. Yeah. Is honors an international language class, does that count um, as an honors course? Um, and then it says like um, something about the honors diploma. So um, honors world languages, um, those are honors courses. We have a couple of those, uh, honors Spanish, um, honors Chinese, I think that's it. But um, as far as the honors diploma goes, the requirement is three years of the same world language or two years of two different languages. Okay, what do the R and E stand for after the credit designation in the programs of studies? So like an example would be credit half R or credit one E. I'm guessing that's like required course or elective. Chelsea, do you think that's the case? That sounds right. Okay, if I don't get an email with this presentation, who would I contact? Um, you could reach out to me directly and I could send it to you. My email is the first email address up here. Yeah, and we shared this information with the middle schools. So we didn't send out any of the information. It would have come from your middle school principal probably. So if you're not getting emails, you could check with them. Um, if your child is on an IEP, how does that affect um, scheduling courses? So we will work with um, the intervention specialist to make sure that your student is scheduled in the courses that they need to be in. Yeah. Okay. Next question is, my daughter is interested in Spanish, but she already speaks Spanish. Does she have to start with Spanish one or can she um, get something more advanced? So that's a great question. I think Mrs. Zingo is maybe on here or she was, I'm pretty sure her um, email, she put her email address in this chat. I would encourage you to Melissa, reach out to her. I'm on oh, here. Yeah, I, I, to I actually just put in the chat um, information for that parent um, that they can email me and kind of just a breakdown of what we would do. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay, how can we pick if we want study hall in the first or second semester? So there's really no way to choose where and when you will get study hall. I guess the easiest way to go about that is maybe if you get your schedule in August and you would like a study hall your first semester, maybe reach out to your school counselor and we could see about dropping a semester class that you have first semester to add a study hall in. Yep. And what we do is we will create wish lists and sometimes we can honor the request. Sometimes we can't. If a student, you know, plays a fall sport and they want their study hall in the fall. If you send an email to the counselor and just ask for the request to be added to like their wish list, then we do our best. Sometimes it just can't be um, worked in, but sometimes it can. Okay, next question. Is Corral a class or an extracurricular? It's an actual class. Yep. And it, like you mentioned earlier in the presentation, it also, if a student takes it for two years, it could... Um, be a PE waiver. Does environmental science count as an advanced science? And is there an AP environmental option? So um, yes to both. Um, okay. Where can students access the applications for selective courses, such as um, 
oh, here's one that I forgot to give you, Chelsea, the intro to debate. Um, I think it's called like intro to speech and rhetorical debate. We'll have, we can send those to the um, middle schools because we sent co-art and student council, but that's one I forgot. Okay. So we'll send that to the middle schools. Okay. Um, student council is a selective course. Is that during class or outside of school day? It is during the school day. Yep. Which courses are the embedded CCP classes? So do you want me to answer that one? Yeah, you can. Okay, so we have comp one and comp two. We have US government and state and local government. We have chemistry. And then we have two that haven't um, been offered this year, um, but hopefully personal finance and supply chain management. Um, and Ms. Alo, if you're on here, if you wanna, if you have anything to, to add to that, but personal finance has been offered in the past as an embedded course but just not this past year. And then supply chain management has also been on our course offerings list, but we haven't been able to offer it. Okay. Is CCP common at the freshman level? Really? But it's an individual family decision. That what I will stress is if you have a freshman and you think your freshman is ready, you know that way more than we do. I would attend the virtual CCP information meeting next Tuesday, get all of the information. Some of the um, things we caution about is just that when they take a CCP class, they are a college student. So that professor is not communicating with you. They're not communicating with the school counselor. Um, they are only communicating with the student because the student is in a college course. They also are starting their college GPA. So all of these courses that they take through CCP, they're building their college transcript and their college GPA. Um, this is rare, but if something would occur and a student would fail a class, then the family would be responsible for um, reimbursing the district. So when I say it's not, it's just, it hasn't, I don't have many freshmen who take it, but that doesn't mean that it's not right for some freshmen. Okay, is there any more detailed information regarding athletes, their course selections, and the potential impact of college eligibility? Um, Melissa, do you have an answer for this? I'm sorry. Well, I would say um, probably contacting our athletic director. Okay. I mean, we have a wonderful athletic program. Um, we have a lot of like athletes that go on to play at the college level. I'm not exactly sure. Um, what the question is, is asking so much like athletes, they select their courses really just like everyone else. We make sure that they are um, eligible by making sure they have the required number of courses. Um, we indicate that a student is an athlete on the bottom of their schedule so that we're aware that they're athletes. Um, our athletic director, she's pretty amazing. She checks el um, eligibility for students and works with families. Not sure if that answers it, but um, we do try to work with the students. And then if the students do think they're going to go on to play at the college level, we help them with um, NCAA el eligibility and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so are we scheduling first and second semester tonight? Um, Chelsea, you answered that and said, yes. Um, should we um, schedule intro to broadcast journalism and sports broadcasting? Yes, if you wanna take that all year, then yes. Okay, if your child is on a 504 plan, will the intervention specialist do the kid's schedule? So no, that would still be done by you guys. Um, there are some things like we could add maybe, so we offer an ASC lab, which is a smaller study hall that I have some students who are on a 504 and they benefit from a smaller study hall like that. Um, but for the most part, no, that's something that you would do. And then can freshmen take AP classes? I'll answer that. Um, typically, no, because most of our AP classes have some sort of prerequisite. The first AP class that a student typically is eligible to take is US history in the sophomore year. So that's typically the first AP class, AP US history. And then from there, students um, are, are eligible. Sometimes it's a grade level requirement. Sometimes they have to have a course before they can take it. So for example, AP environmental science, I believe the prerequisite is biology with a grade of B or higher. 
Um, but you can look at the AP courses in the program of studies and just check to see which grades are eligible to take it and what the prerequisites are. The next um, question is about those embedded CCP classes. Sorry, I do talk fast, but those are listed on the um, GLHS academics page. The GLHS academics page, if you scroll down, it has information on CCP. Um, but again, we do offer composition one and composition two, chemistry, and state and local government, hopefully personal finance, and hopefully um, supply chain management. And I see Ms. Alo, she did chime in and say that, um, that we will offer those or hope to offer those. Um, CCP courses are always a semester long and you get one full high school credit and then however many college credits the course is worth, most of the time it's three. Um, okay, Chelsea, is there a benefit to taking honors classes? Um, I mean, if you think that your student can perform at a level where um, the class moves at a faster pace and the rigor is a little harder, um, then yeah, I, I would suggest it. But if you think that your student might not do as well in that class, then it's it's totally okay to just take a regular, regular class. Yeah. Um, a question about um, a handout for the difference between English 9 and Honors English 9. We do have that handout and um, Chelsea, you can send that out maybe with the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, question, will the comments in the chat be shared with parents in an email? They're very helpful. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not really very um, Zoom savvy. So if we can do it, we can. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but we can definitely talk to like Adam or Matt and see if that's something that we could share. Okay. And then I think, I think those are all the questions. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you guys all for tuning in and asking so many good questions. If you do have any further questions that you think of after this meeting, please contact um, who your student's high school counselor will be, and we'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Yeah. And along those lines, if you do, um, if you are trying to contact a school counselor and they're not responding, I guarantee you they're not getting the email. Um, one or two days, definitely, like, especially right now, we're really swamped with scheduling all of our students um, and all of the other duties that we have um, in addition to scheduling. But it should never take more than three days for a counselor to get back to you. But I have found parent emails in my spam folder, which I think we all do try to check, but sometimes we miss those. Also, sometimes people misspell our last names. Um, so if you're not hearing back from a school counselor, if you just call the main guidance line, then Mrs. Brawford can let us know that you've been trying to get a hold of us. Okay, and then someone is telling us how to save the chat, so we'll do that. Okay. So the CCP session is virtual. And actually, we have one more um, question, Chelsea. Um, just checking to see if I understand if my child took or um, participated in cross country and track, does that mean they don't have to have PE? Yes, as long as they complete the entire season of both sport. Okay. All right. All right. Well, so that's all. Chelsea, we can go ahead and end the presentation. Um, okay. And I will um, save the chat. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Chelsea, I'm going to read you these directions. I can't find the doc. I think I, ju I, think I just saved it. Did you? Okay. Yeah, there was a button that says save chat. Perfect. And then we can find out how we can share it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So should we stop recording? Yes. Does that mean we have to leave? Oh, nope. Stop right here. Stop recording.